Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Trade Talk. So it's been a couple of days since my last one, but things are, I wouldn't say things are happening, but there's a lot of talk around a lot of different scenarios, different players, players that could come to St Kilda, players that could leave St Kilda. Um, and I thought I'd just kind of do a video to give you my thoughts, summarize it and see where things lie. So the first one to, to kick this off is obviously Paddy Dow. So that's one that um, I mentioned in the previous video that uh, I believe is one of the more likely deals to get done. Obviously Liam Henry as well. Uh, we'll talk about that, but Paddy Dow, uh, Tom Morris came out today and he just mentioned uh, that Paddy Dow is uh, one that could actually cause some angst between Carlton and St Kilda in the trade period because Carlton are adamant that it has to be via a trade. St Kilda is telling people that they can get him as a delisted free agent or via the pre-season draft. So there's a bit of a discrepancy there in terms of what Carlton want from St Kilda and then what St Kilda think can be achieved to get Paddy Dow for basically nothing. Um, that's obviously going to be something that's going to test both St Kilda and Carlton. So that's something that could take a bit longer to get done than we actually thought. Um, to me, that was probably one of the more clear-cut ones, but now with, I guess, a discrepancy with what Carlton want and what St Kilda want to do, there's going to be a bit more negotiation there uh, behind the scenes. So that one we can park for the moment. The big one, obviously, outgoing is Jade Gresham. Uh, there's been a lot of talk in the last couple of, I guess in the last 24 to 48 hours, that he's set to nominate um, Essendon as his preferred destination for 2024 and beyond. Um, it's believed that Jade Gresham will take a pay cut to join Essendon in the next few weeks. Uh, the presumed 600 to $650,000 contract per season um, will compensate St Kilda with a late first round pick to early second round picks. So again, this one, that I, I don't get it because people still seem to get, not be able to wrap their hands around it, but they think that we're gonna get a first round compensation early second round and give it back to Essendon for some reason. That's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. If the deal's gonna be done, we're gonna use a third or fourth round pick for Shield. We're gonna take him and his salary, get compensation for whatever they pay Gresham and keep that and use that for maybe a Henry or whoever else could be on the market at that time. So that's that deal. That one, to me, seems very clear cut. Um, I think the more I think about it, the more it just seems right for all parties. I think Gresh probably wants to start, it just get a fresh start somewhere else. And, you know, the more talk that comes out of this, um, you know, the, the more you think it's, it's probably, you know, going to happen than not. So that's kind of the case there for Jade Gresham. And now the biggest one that everyone is messaging me about, which I know is probably a zero to 1% chance of happening, is Clayton Oliver. Now, we don't even know if this is really true. We need to kind of just take it by, you know, a grain of salt at the moment. But Clayton Oliver, yes, he fits a need. Yes, he's that gun mid that we would be desperately wanting if he were really available. But... Adelaide supposedly are the front runners, supposedly are Clayton Oliver's preference. Again, we don't know if this is legit or not. This is the silly season saying, as we know that this happens. Jordan Degoe last year, uh, Josh Kelly years gone by with Dustin Martin. We've, we've been linked to a lot of big name players. He's another big name player. Melbourne, I think would be silly to get rid of him. I know he's got problems, but he's a young guy. You work through that. You don't just palm him off for nothing. So... I would be staggered if he actually did leave, but um, there are some trade options as to what we could possibly offer Melbourne for Clayton Oliver, which seems ridiculous to say out loud, but hey, why not? We'll indulge, we'll indulge. Uh, they reckon um, that we've got two, so if we get that compensation for Gresham, that's two top 15 picks, depending on the Gresham compensation, um, and we're already chasing a mid. So they reckon we could go you know, an offer 12 and 13 and maybe a future first or something for Clayton Oliver, he would be worth quite a bit. Like Adelaide, they've got three top 25 picks plus Shane McAdam, which has been, uh, which he asked for a trade to Melbourne. So they would give a player and three top 25 picks basically for Clayton Oliver. But from what I know, yes, he's got some personal problems. That's a big thing for us. You know, you go to the best and fairest, you see all these young impressionable kids and how well they're going, how confident they are and the structure and belief and um, drive around them. 
and especially from the senior boys as well, from the top down at the club, we're doing a lot right. We did have this same discussion last year about Jordan to go in. Yes, he's a gun player, but hey, he comes with a little bit of baggage. Is that going to affect what we've already been working the last couple of years at the draft, you know, in molding for the future of this club? So some people might say, hey, Jakey, it's ridiculous. He's a gun player. We should do whatever we can to get him. I think if there's even a small chance that we could get him, there's no harm in asking the question. I think it would, wouldn't hurt. Um, but I'd be very surprised if we actually got really deep into discussions to get him. I think... You know, we, we've already said that we want to hit the draft. We've already said that we want to use those picks for some youth. Um, but yes, he does fit a need. He, he would immediately fix that midfield. You know, there would still be work to be done. But if you got him, you got Shield still, which would be a possibility among, you know, Dow and Henry. Not bad. Not bad. So um, that's kind of the talk of the town at the moment. Obviously, I just, yeah, I, I can't see see it really happening. Um, in terms of other players, Hunter Clark, Caulfield, um, I believe they've got some contracts on the table, but um, there's still a lot of work to be done there um, from what I've been told. Um, Caulfield, I think Brisbane, very strongly linked there. I think the Bulldogs are actually quite keen on Nick Caulfield, so the Doggies keep a close eye on them. I don't know what they've got to offer, but um, they're, they're snooping around, and I think they need a player like Nick Caulfield, to be honest. So, um, yeah, and then... Stocker, contract on the table. Ronnie Burns as well should re-sign very soon, uh, which is exciting because I really love Ronnie and I think he had a good year. Um, and then Dougal Howard's another one with North Melbourne, but I don't think anything's going to happen there. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the news at the moment saying is there's, there's a lot of filtering, you know, there's a lot of talk in the, on, online and stuff and you don't know really where to look, but I've tried to condense as much as, much as I can. Uh, this is more just a, a relaying of what I've read and giving my opinion, and then you guys can share yours in the comments as well. So hopefully you appreciate it. The biggest uh, talking point is obviously Clayton Oliver. Uh, just based on the DMs that I'm getting, a lot of people very, very excited about even the small chance that he could be a Saner. But I think there's a lot of other things that need to, to happen for that even to be a remote possibility. So we'll wait and see. It's still very early days in the trade period. Um, so any other news that breaks, I'll let you know as soon as I can. But until then, Saners, enjoy the rest of your week. Take care. And as always, go be mighty Saners. See you guys.